To every legend of strength, there is a genesis, a training ground that formed them. C.T. Fletcher with Metroflex, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Gold's Gym. We traveled to Norway to experience the beginnings of the vice grip Viking, Ode Haugen, my mentor, coach, and friend. What's up, everybody? I'm Martins, decorated world's strongest man champion, and this is Romar one of my best buddies and creative powerhouse behind the show. We like to travel around the world, doing what we love, adventuring, lifting big things, eating food, and shining a light on strength unknown. It's like rehearsal, like, you wanna say like? Hi, Martins here. I uh, just competed in the uh, Dana, uh, California Celtic Classic Strongman competition here at Dana Point, and uh, I ended up getting third place. Um, competed against the same guys, Oh, my ankle! Uh, <laughs> That's good, man. Like, I'm going for real, or like. When I had just barely turned 20, I packed up my things and drove across the USA from Massachusetts to Los Angeles. Training strongman was on my radar, and I wanted to train with the best. With that goal in mind, I made some phone calls to find local strongmen to train with. One of these phone calls set the course for my life. It was the vice grip Viking himself, Old Haugen. It is in his very own garage that he helped me refine strongman events, taught me how to log press, lift stones, telephone poles, reinforce the importance of grip strength, and time and time again, set feats of strength that are still untouched to this day. It took years before he allowed me to compete at his Pro-Am Strongman show, but the patience he taught me was worth it. I ended up winning the show against other professionals, landing me my pro card and an invitation to compete in Giants Live Iceland. And well, you guys know the rest. Ode massively shaped my destiny in the sport, but what's his history? What are his beginnings? Where did he step into the world of strength to become the testament of longevity? We traveled from Latvia to his home country of Norway on a mission to retrace his steps. But first, a little detour. In the mountains of Vinstra, there's a hotel called Feifor, overlooking a picturesque lake. This location is a battlegrounds for ultimate strength tests. They host world's strongest Viking, Clash on the Mountains, Feifor Strength Festival, and so much more. Behind all of these events, this woman. Kiki Barely Johnson. So what's like the history of that? Like how did this all get started? Uh, it started back in, I think, 15 or 16, with just Highland Games. Wait, how, when was it? 15? 2015 or 2016, I'm a bit unsure. Okay, okay. Uh, I came in to this in 17. Okay. I was asked, Kiki, can you help us? Yeah. And I was, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Highland game is yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that's what it was in the beginning. Just yeah, Highland it, games. it was just Highland games uh, and stones of strength. Mm -hmm. I realized that we need more strength sports, yeah. and my heart isn't strongman, so we added strongman. Awesome! I'm so yeah. glad you did. So, is this um, is it a stepping stone for anything? Does this like lead into any other competitions, or is it just a standalone? Uh, at the moment, we are the winner in strongman, which we had last weekend. Winners in both strongman and strong woman got a uh, spot in official strongman games, mm -hmm. which can lead. Okay, no, that's a big deal. Yeah, and that can lead, could lead into, into giant's yeah. life. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I have made a deal with uh, Lawrence Chalet that he will come up here next year. Okay. And do the talking. Awesome. So. It's good. That's a de that's definitely a good idea. So my dream is to to not necessarily make it much bigger because yeah. during the week there will be about 120 athletes oh, wow. with, from strongman to mass wrestling um, but make it more known and people are free to come up and test the equipment do they have to stay at night or no. anything? You just just come here you and can just stop get by. your hands on and yeah 
That's really cool. I love what you're doing, Kiki. Please keep this up. <laughs> I what will. a legend. So happy to be here. So happy you're putting this on. We had just missed the strongman contest, but I got a chance to witness and test my ultimate weakness, Highland Games. What's up guys, we're here at Fay4 and I'm about to do the sheep toss. It's the sheep, sheep toss. Sheep, sheep? Sheep. Well done. Sheep, sheep the toss up. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> Mona in the category, feel the height. Nice and strictly plus. Second attempt for Keely Horrigan. Oh, there you go. I gotta keep holding it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so the bag is they do 16 make a bit pounds. Noise when you stab them, though. Today it's gonna stay the same. Usually the usually different weights for classes. The A's usually throw 20, and everybody else throws 16. Um, and then it's just last man standing as the bar goes up. So it'll go up, I think, two feet per every uh, every round. And if you're still in, the last man standing at the end wins. Are y'all awake out there? Let's go! Come on! Here we go, Mark! One more time! One more time! There he is! Next time, next time. Uh, my name is Mona Malik, and I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I have been working on Highland Games 11 years, um, and Sheaf Toss is super duper technical and it took me a very long time to figure out any kind of form that worked consistently. <laughs> Current world record is I think 29 feet um, so I still have a ways to go. I think I got 26 yesterday um, but I actually have been getting a little bit stronger on it and so I'm hoping, I'm hoping. I, I got some work to do but I think maybe I can push it. The story has that the guy that did that the first time, he was carrying a mast out to a ship. And it he took that right. He took three steps with it and he died. And oh my gosh. The, and that's the long tour, did three steps with it and survived. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You're pretty right awesome. In During winter, of course. She yeah. Yeah. Wizards running. That was incredible. Winter, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> it's strength of feet. Winter strength. Well, I'm not going to do it. Is someone else going to do it? No. no. No one has ever touched it since. Wow. Yeah. So it's just here as a memory. And how much did you, did you say weight? Five hundred something kilos. Oh, that's but again, it's so oh no, but there's no way to grab it. Yeah. yeah. We saw the sheaf toss and stone carries of various kinds, including a manhood stone carry world record attempt. Seventy, uh, 74 yeah. centimeters. You, you don't have the oh, big leg. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Powerful pick. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. 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 Get the set. Fight for it. Fight for it. Get that deep set underneath it. Come on, yo, yo. Drive your hips hard into it. Come on, out. Come on. Come on, Ilya. I beat the previous one. Yeah. New record. One and a half strides. Uh, that's a heavy stone. Brutally heavy stone. Awkward shape. And of course, like one of the only ways to really pick it and shimmy it is to get that arm hooked underneath it, which places a tremendous amount of force on the bicep if you cannot shimmy your body underneath it. It wasn't all serious hardcore action. In the evenings, we honored old Viking traditional games of strength, skill, and music. In these 
these mountains, I witnessed something special. And as I reminisced of our journey so far, Norway took a special place in my heart. From athletes around the world competing to test their strength, paraplegics showing off their might and will, experiencing ancient history of Viking culture, it was a surprisingly immersive and eye-opening adventure. After six long weeks of traveling around the world, this was our last stop, Trondheim. Oh, I was just thinking, you're kind of like the Norwegian Schwarzenegger. He had a start in bodybuilding, had a very successful competitive com uh, career. Both became entrepreneurs, and uh, both were like heroes of mine. You gonna do like a career in politics now? No, that's not in the card. <laughs> Yeah, when I uh, first started, of course, I didn't have any weight. There was no, no weight in, at all in my hometown. So I had to make everything from scratch. The first weights I had were basically dumbbells made with birch, birch with stumps of birch wood uh, with a handle on them. And the handle was wood as well. <laughs> and I used to uh, borrow my mother's uh, wash basin. She had like a sink wash basin that I filled with water and I pushed, uh, pushed the, uh, left the uh, dumbbells in. So when you were younger, your primary thing was bodybuilding. Yeah. But you still did uh, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, track and field, really wanted to show off your strength. Well, what inspired you in bodybuilding and what made you want to also do all the strength stuff at the same time? I and mean, that's a lot to balance. Yeah. Well, uh, when, I st when I first started this uh, lifting when I was very young, I, uh, that's how I lo learned uh, English practically, reading uh, uh -huh. uh, American uh, strength magazine and uh, English magazines and stuff like that. So. A lot of the American athletes, like, uh, you know, probably my biggest inspiration, my biggest hero was, uh, was and is uh, Bill Pearl. His true legendary tale only began at the age of 45 when he entered the world of strongman, eventually winning America's Strongest Man and in his mid-50s, placing sixth in the world. This is a powerlifting gym, IPF. Uh, water controlled. Uh, so it's drug free. Drug free. Gym. And this is Ode's beginning. Yeah. And I'm happy they are uh, being. Uh, is, does it look the same as it did before? It was like a barn like this? Yeah. Well, it's not this, uh, it's uh, underground. Oh. Yeah. It's underneath this yeah, pretty underneath. barn. Yeah. Apparently also this gym is in a bomb shelter so that even if the world ends, you could get your pump on. Yeah. So we're completely uh, lost as to how to find this yeah, underground bomb us. shelter bunker of a uh, gym. But uh, so we're just searching around. You probably found some uh, traces here of the original uh, facilities, maybe an address or something. But I'm pretty much sure I know what it is. It sounds like a secret organization. They really don't want just anyone wandering in there. Yeah, and surrounded by some guys in like red robes and masks. That's it over there, guys. You found it? Yeah. There we go. Pippi's uh, Pippi Longstrumpers. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> no, that's the entrance. That's entrance. Huh? Right? Well, that doesn't go. That's, if it was there, it would be underneath the houses over there. I mean, maybe there's like a, you know. Elevator. No, it's, it's uh, right here. It's under this building, I'm sure. Okay. I just sent a message to Mark Bell, so Sorry. I can ask her. See you, Stefan. Martin. You, Stefan. Nice to meet Pleasure. you. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Hi, Stefan. You, Stefan. Hegle. Hegle, Hegle. Yeah. Stort. Good day, Hegle. Yeah. Yeah. Day and night? No, day and night. Day and night. Oh, yeah. I told you it was in the... It's right in there. Now it's... It's the mid-side. That's when we get the game. So what are you doing in Norway? Uh, exploring. Well, first pay for it, and now uh, seeing Odd Haugen's uh, childhood and his, his roots. This is where he started. So, uh, yeah. This is looking good as well. Uh, should be. Should be. Yeah. 
Because he's going, hey, the kid kicks at seven. Why didn't we see that? It was so obvious. <laughs> so big. This is a bombshell. This is a gym in a bombshell or under a s school. Um, what grades are there here? They're kindergarten. Kindergarten. It's a kindergarten school. Check this out. Oh, Oda was telling me that he, he believes this is the original. This is a leg extension leg curl. And, uh, I mean, this is like such a simple, beautiful, elegant, yet rustic design. Another thing that's really interesting about this place, because it's a bomb shelter, so deep, like underground, you cannot get signal, no Wi-Fi, so that all you can do here is just hone in, train, talk to whoever you're training with, but that's it. This is the Mecca, this is like the altar of the church. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is uh, you know, a competition, uh, the same, same as we have in the training hall. Yeah, this is a competition, nice. right? Competition ER, ER equipment. We have a nice bench, yeah. nice so bench squat, squat rack. Squat rack, yeah. Yeah, squat rack. I'm the godfather of the club, this guy, Billy Gary Kasperson. Yeah. He was also a performance uh, in, uh, in circus. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so he was famous for pulling trains with his teeth. Oh, this is the guy! That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Kaspari. 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 Wow. The first time listening with him, he's the one that he would uh, lay, I would lay on my back with the belt and I would uh, and he would grab, uh, bite the belt and just lift me. He would lift you with yeah, his teeth. And I was probably like 90 kilos at the time, 200 pounds. This guy's another level. So was he our training partner, mentor? Like what? Uh, kind of we, trained, we all trained together and we yeah. started this together. We all together on this. That's awesome. Was he they, like were, a, they were all much older than me, but I was a young yeah. guy, Primus. Uh, so, so he was like, you're, you're, you're old. Yeah. Was he ever like an inspirator? Like, um, did he ever like inspire you or move you to? Yeah, he, harder. yeah, I mean, no, definitely. I mean, these guys were very strong in certain things. He, he, he was uh, like, I could probably lift with him at my, uh, even at my 16, 17 years old in some things. But, uh, but when it came to this uh, absolute strength stuff, it was incredible. Amazing. If you could uh, recognize this. No, we were gifted this from uh, Reynard Stern oh, yeah? when we arranged the national championships in 2017. Oh, yeah. Can you feel it? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's heavier than I thought. Very nice. You were gifted this. No. Yeah, we um, uh, according to the NSTM, one of the OGs of the club, it was one of the first training equipment the club had. Really? And we were gifted it when we arranged the national championships in mm. 2017. I see. This one, this is the oldest one we got. There you go. Have you seen Randall? Yeah. This is Ord Haugen's old best friend. Feel it? This is awesome. That bar was used for a record deadlift, I think in the early 70s, by a guy named Turkel Randall. In 400 kilo. I think it was 375 officially, but yeah. it's rumored to have done 400 yeah. on training or on. He was the first one to ever do the 400. Yeah. But it was. Uh, hold, it, hold, it. Uh, it was huh? hold it, hold it. This might be something that you lifted with. Yeah, sure, probably. probably. Probably did. Still got it! Oh. Oh. Uh, not warmed up. <laughs> no, I think everybody lifted this. No yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an 80 kilo one? That's an 80 kilo one. Yeah. But it's not a regular hand. So it's right. Is it regular? I think it's oh, not. That is an awesome dumbbell. Yep. That is a great look. It's one. solid. All these years later, that is solid. That's Do great. people still use that? It was just, yeah. this is there. Yeah. Uh, it's just for fun. Just for is like showing good? off or lifting it. But I don't think anybody can really train with it. Maybe for rows. For the bench press, is it? Ben? Love these public bars. I know, like, hey, okay. I used to from back in the days. I'm gonna do a muscle up. <laughs> Can anyone join this club? Uh, well, yeah, it's an open club. You just have to agree to the rules of the club and the uh, VADA codex. I think when I left in the early 70s, 
it uh, most of it was it then it turned to pretty much all uh, powerlifting i think yeah because in the first location i think the roof was higher if you're a tall man here doing so olympic you, weightlifting yeah. you're gonna hit the ceiling so you can't really do it here oh yeah no. well, while you were training here oh, what uh, competitions did you participate in oh i uh, i did like uh, norwegian championships in uh, in weightlifting from yeah. training here yeah oh. i uh, i won and the under 17 age group, and then I won the uh, won the junior junior championship, which is under 23. Back in the days, every member got their own membership card, and it got stapled to this wall, so the board of the club could know who was a member and who wasn't. But we we, we stopped using it eventually because the club grew so large that we couldn't really keep track anymore. <laughs> For the past 10 years of lifting with Odin Romark, it's amazing for us to finally see where our grandpa's strength had his beginnings. My heart was filled when I saw Ode's face light up with joy, rekindling his past. It felt like an anime experience come to life, watching my sensei step into his childhood. I will from now on have flashbacks of these moments when I doubt myself and wonder what my future will bring. This wraps up this leg of our Strength Unknown series. Next, we hope to be traveling to either Pakistan, Japan, or Greenland. If you have any knowledge of strength from these locations that you'd like to see, make sure to mention it in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and support this channel by downloading and partaking in the Wreck-It Power app.